Hello everybody, my name is KevGuy378 and welcome back to Depression Quest. So we decided to take medication with the therapy. You think the matter over long and hard. It's strange to think that recently none of this sort of thing was even on your radar. And here you are, now being a asked to make a decision about it. You're both skeptical and nervous, still getting over the initial shock of even just talking to a therapist. Still, over the years, you've done enough entry-level reading on the subject to know that if it doesn't help, at least it probably won't hurt, right? After an, an intense and protracted period of internal vis vacillation, you decide to bite the bullet and go for it. You tell Dr. Melville that you'd like to try medication in addition to your therapy. And you spend about half an hour going over what you'll be taking and what you should expect from it. Thinking back on the decision later, you're pretty sure you had your fist tightly clenched the whole way through. Uh, actually, with the... If it doesn't help, at least it probably won't hurt, right? That, um... That is pretty much with the side effects. You probably see more of the side effects first before it actually starts helping. I am moderately depressed though. That's that's good. Uh, I, I mean, it hasn't worsened, and that's good. Um, good therapy, good counselor. My medication is helping to keep the edge off and keep some of the darker and more negative feedback loops from being as prevalent. Good. It's a Wednesday evening, and you're visiting at your parents' house for a holiday. It's one of the handful of times during the year you ha you drive out to visit your old hometown, and you've seen random people you had gone to school with around town. Whenever bumping into them, the usual short versions of what you've done since graduating are exchanged. You've gone through a few of these today, and have been very aware of how much you feel you haven't accomplished. When you were in high school, you had much larger plans, and you feel like you failed to manifest most of them. Even if you had managed to, you have largely lost interest in what you thought you wanted to do growing up. Now, you're not really sure what you want to do, and you felt like you were lacking the ambition or drive to figure it out. Everyone you've caught up with seems so much happier than you, like you, they've got their lives all figured out, and you've kind of been feeling like a failure by comparison. That is a pretty bad feeling to feel. Uh, that's how I felt a lot during school, actually. I just felt like a fairy compared to everyone else. Or, your brother Malcolm arrives with his wife in tow shortly before you all sit down to dinner. He's been traveling for his job lately and you haven't seen him since the day he picked you up from the dentist. Your parents haven't seen him since before then. During dinner, they all catch up and Malcolm talks about the amazing things he's done on the road. Your mother turns to you and asks what you've been up to since you've seen them last. Oh, same old, same old, you say. Nothing really new going on. Your mother makes a face. Oh, nothing new? How long are you planning on staying at that job of yours? What do you say? Uh, tell them about the exciting new job you're gunning for? Nope, but don't remember ever thinking about that. Lie, tell them what they want to hear that you are actively looking for a more prestigious position. Admit that you don't know what you want to do. Excuse yourself to the bathroom. I probably lose the train of thought of really what to say and then just kind of admit that I don't know what I want to do. Actually, you start sheepishly. I'm not really sure what I want to do right now. Your mom puts down her fork. So what? You're planning on leaving the way you do for the rest of your life? How would you afford a house on that paycheck? What about kids? Your father interrupts, lightly placing his hand over your mother's. It's okay, Linda. Let the kids be what they are. There's nothing wrong with not knowing what you want to do in your 20s. I didn't get into construction until I was nearly 40. Your mother looks across the table at you, unsatisfied with her husband's reasoning. I don't think it's normal for someone at that age to do not have a path. You need to think hard about it or you'll never make anything of yourself. You... Mom. 
Come on. Malcolm interjects. This emotionally exhausts you. You want to tell her that you are thinking hard and that not knowing what you're doing with yourself bothers you more than it could ever bother her. That sometimes it feels like you're lost in the woods and that you were to drop if, if you were to drop dead in your apartment, the world wouldn't notice. You want to make her understand that more often than not, you feel like an alien. Like there isn't anywhere in this world that feels like a place where you belong. You have no idea how to fix it or what to do. You wish you could find the words so she would understand that being looked down on for this kills you. And drives home the feeling of being a total outsider. Instead, you get very quiet for the rest of the meal while your mind goes numb. Everything inside you feels exhausted. Everything is normal or the same, I mean. What's that? It's a rainy night. You are hurrying through the rain to Alex's apartment at her behest. Though your pace is quick, the rain is steadily soaking up your pant legs as you traverse the town, and it's darkening your already poor mood. A call came while you were at home after a day of dealing with abnormally frustrating people. You'd spent the afternoon trying to unwind and get some work on your project done. Alex called and interrupted one of your try to make progress, get frustrated at not making progress, make a harder time making progress due to frustration, repeat loops. And you haven't fully shaken off the feelings of being annoyed with yourself from it yet. You knock on her door, and on the third knock, hear her voice call from further in the apartment to come on in. As you cross the threshold, dripping rainwater all the way, you notice that the lights are turned down very low in the apartment. You squint to navigate it as you clutch onto your damp umbrella, but end up hitting your shin on a table, side table, mumbling a profanity under your breath. You barely make out Alex emerging from the hallway, clad in what looks to be a robe with the bare skin of her legs peering out underneath. Why don't you come in and warm up? She asks in her designated, slightly cheesy, sexy voice. After a beat of silence, she states more naturally, My roommates are out of town this weekend, so I thought it might be nice to have a little fun while they're away. You appreciate her affection, but you are too wrapped up in your own negative feedback loops to be in the mood right now. What do you do? Let go of your stress and be intimate with your girlfriend, try to unwind with her before getting physical. Just you do something else instead. Tell her you're not in the mood. Everything is the same. I would just try and unwind with her before getting physical, just to kind of let her know what's going on. Where is that? Oh, those are the uh, stairs. Um, uh, I don't even know what they're called. You look at her standing barely lit and notice there's a few candles scattered around the apartment. It occurs to you that she has tried to make this night special for the two of you, even though you have a tight knot of antisocial frustration in your stomach. Seeing how much she cares, cares makes you want to try to melt it away so you can show her how much you care that she's gone through all this trouble. However, you desperately need to shift gears first before that's even possible. You look amazing. Let's have a drink together, you suggest, hoping that this will give you the push you need to get into the mood. You go into the kitchen and pour the two of you drinks, trying to focus on letting go of your bad mood. You sit down on the couch next to her. She cuddles up to you instantly. What should we toast to? She asks as she takes her drink. You think for a moment, passing up the cheesy to us option. You say what's on your mind, letting go of your bad day. Two tonight. The two of you cheers, and you ask for her about her day. Conversation turns flirtatious, and the two of you find yourselves in the bed bedroom shortly after. You find that you are having trouble getting into things physically with her, and remember that diminished arousal was a possible side effect of your medication. You'd hope that you were part of the population that wouldn't be affected by it, but it seems as though this was not the case. However, you are able to still endure the closest with Alex, and fall asleep together happily. I am still the same. Nothing has changed. I thought I would at least, you know, increase my mood a little bit being with my girlfriend, Alex.
It's an early winter evening, and even though it's not particularly late, the time of year has lent the sky an almost prematurely darkened cast. Day after day, just like today, you trudge home from a job you have increasingly come to hate. On this day, your job misery seems to have reached critical mass, and not even shedding your rain-laden and uncomfortable work clothes helps you to rewind, unwind from your workday. You collapse into your couch, blank and numb, while your job always seemed to just be an unpleasant reality of existence. It has a position you sort of fell into unexpectedly, never intending to work there long term, and it's getting harder and harder to keep up. While it's certainly not your dream job, you've always just sort of stuck it out, out of necessity before, but it's becoming increasingly difficult to do that. Though you couldn't even begin to imagine what else you could do, you find yourself face to face with a question you just can't ignore: Is your complacency worth the price of this level of misery? What do you do? I had this feeling before with uh, with work when I worked at uh, Abercrombie, and it just, as I have said before, it just felt really, I just felt down the whole time. I just wanted to get work done. There wasn't really any motivation or passion into this kind of work. It was just get this done, wait for the time to come, and it was just—it just felt horrible. I just—I hated it. So what do I do? Get proactive, pull out your resume, and start looking for other jobs to send feelers out to. Try and at least be productive by focusing your efforts on your project tonight. Aimlessly look through classifieds for another job. Turn on the TV and let your mind go blank. Hmm. I will at least try to be productive. You know, if I look at other jobs or aimless, you know, aimlessly, it just probably wouldn't help because I just kind of more down with the the requirements from other jobs. Turn TV and let your mind go blank. That that's a big one. When your mind goes blank. A lot of the times, your your mind just shuts down, or not shuts down, but it's just you see have too many thoughts coming in at once. That once you once you keep thinking about all of that, you just don't want to think anymore, and everything just kind of goes blank. Like it's too much into nothing. It's really hard to understand um, to really understand it or get that, but it's just you don't know what to do. You just kind of kind of just stare blankly at. Someone or something trying to figure out what is there to do. Let's try and be productive. You sit down at your computer to blow off some steam, but are surprised to find your thoughts drifting to your long-neglected project. You talk yourself into opening it up and taking a look for the first time in what must be weeks. For whatever reason, your anger that you've been feeling towards your day job seems to have con converted, converted to pure passion as you seem to be overflowing with ideas tonight. It's as if you've got a buildup of ideas that just haven't gone out, and now you're in the zone. While you don't get an unnatural amount of work done, you do work for a solid couple of hours, and it really feels great. What's more, you share some stuff across your social media network, and you receive quite a bit of positive feedback, which makes you feel great. When you go, when you go to bed that night, you tell yourself that your job may suck. But at least you got something you really care about that you can put effort into and feel really good about yourself. In fact, as you're falling asleep, you can barely even remember your workday. You are still definitely, you are definitely still depressed, but things are getting better. Whatever you're doing seems to be working. You really feel like you're taking steps to affect positive change in your life. You now seem to enjoy seeing your therapist between giving you a chance to talk things out and the CBT techniques. She shares with you. you. Find your sessions extremely helpful. You have been taking your medication regularly, and while you are skeptical at first, it's hard to argue with the fact that you're feeling better than you have in a long time. I am doing great now, it, uh, apparently, and everything seems to be working in my life, and that's awesome. It's a little past 8 a.m. on a Tuesday night. How the fuck am I gonna do this? Up top. 
You're at your computer, frustration levels peak, rubbing your eyes and sighing heavily. You're working on a project from your job that has you stretched to wit's end, trying to meet a looming deadline. And as it lurks closer and closer, you're seriously doubting your ability to get it done. You're dragging you, you're dragging your feet a little at work due to your complete lack of energy lately. In spite of wanting to do a good job, you find yourself unable to push past it and feel horribly useless for it. You slide your hands off your face to look at your screen as it beeps at you. Hey, are you there? I really need to talk to someone about something. You feel like you are getting nowhere with your current task. You could probably use a break. However, you know that you have a history of getting distracted and then losing motivation to pick something back up again afterward. What do you do? Multitask? Nope, can't. Tell Attic you're busy. Uh, try to regain your focus. Don't answer. Answer Attic. I am the same. I am getting better. Hooray! to answer attic and this is where I'm going to end everybody everyone thank you for watching this video I appreciate it so much that you guys are taking their time to watch these and please share these videos um, there are a lot of people who have depression it's really hard for them to to really understand you know to connect with someone else that really that has depression also and I hope my stories and experiences can really help people see that that doing these things, getting a therapist, getting medication, will help a huge amount. Thank you again everybody and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye!